Hello, hello, welcome to our channel another Saturday and we have some good and bad news unfortunately. Uh, I'm gonna start with bad news um, to get this over with. Our equipment broke, broke down. Um, we tried to fix it whole morning and I think it gave you quite a headache. Unfortunately, nothing we can do about this, I'm afraid. So we're gonna go back to our old style and lavaliers. Hopefully it will be fixed um, on our next reaction. But um, I, I hope you, you won't mind for, for this one uh, to stick to lavaliers. Now, um, the good news. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if it's a good news. It's literally something I wanted to, to read you guys because I feel like um, our <laughs> reaction to live Numa uh, with this amazing performance by Danny Carey, I think it, um, it uh, gave some people great creativity which has been expressed in their last comment by Osin Buffalo Osin Buffalo so I literally wanted to have a read because he created a, a new adjective tool faced um, so <laughs> as an example uh, he gave this one she was watching Danny Carey and struggled might mightily with her musical interpretation she became tool faced I don't know it just made my day this morning and I really like this so I wanted to have a read through it now in terms of today's reaction I've actually left you all the initiative here and you know I know that we had quite a lot of comments under our last video that I should really um, watch the live performance with the actual video of the live performance so I think there was a little bit of a criticism I was hoping that on today's video I'm gonna have a look uh, into the actual live reaction video but I think you have slightly different plans yeah, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna to conform to most of the comments and <laughs> I've been called stupid, but it's fine. Oh, uh, so I just picked uh, another just music without video and a studio version because I actually think that the quality of music is better. So uh, yeah, not a live, not a video. Uh, it's gonna be a dead wing uh, by Porcupine Tree. So it's not from the same album. No, it's from, I think it's from Deadwing album. It's called like, it's a first song on Deadwing album. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go with it. So yeah, let's do it. Do you have lyrics? Hmm? Do you have lyrics? Uh, yeah. Ready? Yes, I am. <laughs> Nice and smooth. 
Okay. I had quite a mixed feelings throughout the song. Um, the, I felt like the more we go into the song, the more I like it, though. There was a bit of mixed feelings, I must say. Um, what What do you didn't like? It's not that I didn't like it. I just had a bit of a mixed feelings at times. Because, you know, the, the way the song was structured, I felt like it's it's some kind of song from a movie again. I had this feeling that it is quite musical. But then there was a bit of darkness in the musical side of things. I really enjoyed the ending as well. The, not even the ending, the end part. There was like the expression of darkness, I'd say. I'm not sure whether it's right, but I felt like the music itself, without looking at the lyrics, was trying to express certain darkness. So you're Which, right, because uh, you remember the Arriving Somewhere But Not Here song. That was from the same album. That was from Deadwing album mm -hmm. and this i think was uh primary primary meant to be a movie soundtrack so i think you might be right about getting the movie vibes because it had kind of a throughout this kind of movie vibe something that they could see but then this darkness you know i don't know why but uh, my first thought in relation to the movie was kind of Val van helsing type of movie or something with like vampires because of this darkness but then we have dead wing so the title itself is also quite darky. Have you seen the album heavy. cover? No, I haven't. You might want to Google it. Because it's you... pretty dark as well. Okay. And the album is called Deadwing as well, yeah? Yep. Let's have a look. Deadwing. Ooh. It is dark. It is all dark. And you said that the uh, the train was also from the same album, yeah? No, I don't think so. Trains was from different album. Oh, okay. The arriving somewhere, the but, not but not here. I think it was the first song we did, or second of Porcupine Tree. Yeah, it was the second, I believe. The first was Train, I'm pretty sure of that. Yes, it was the second. I'm just trying to link these two songs right now. Maybe I shouldn't start with linking them, though, because, again, I had a bit of a mixed feelings in terms of the lyrics as well. Arriving somewhere but not here was about kind of his youth, uh, some yeah. memories from youth, I think. Yeah, but then the dead wing and the, this song opens the whole album, did you say? Yeah, correct. Huh. Let's have a, a bit of a, of a chat maybe about the lyrics. <clears throat> I will be struggling, I think. I think everyone is struggling. There's, uh, it's very hard to find any interpretation online of those lyrics. So it might be very vague. Yeah, so first you have this kind of movie type of vibe, but then you have this expression of, of darkness, of, of something difficult, I'd say. Um, there is creeping darkness, the creepiness, I even say. That's, that's actually the, the right word, the kind of creepiness, but strong, um, yet really enjoyable at the end, especially. Um, Again, the more I went for song, the more I liked this. But you know, more as more of a musical experience, I couldn't really kind of focus on one main story that I could see throughout the song because of those lyrics as well. So that's why I had a bit of a mixed feelings. I like when, you know, it's probably just me and my individual uh, approach, but I like to, you know, have some kind of picture that is crystallizing as I go through the song. And I had a bit of a problem here because of this um, very sometimes metaphorical lyrics. Um, something warm and soft just passed through here. I took the precious things that I hold dearer. It riffled through the gray and disappeared. The creeping darkness make the small hours clear, like a cancer scare. What this may think, what, um, what do you think it, is, it may mean? Which part? The one? The, the very first. The start from the. Let's start from the start. What is the dead wing? Why dead wing? Is it just some artistic move here? Or how? Or is it the actual? You know, very on purpose. I mean, I've only heard so few porcupine tree. Dead wing songs. means, but it is a definition by mm -hmm. Urban Dictionary, mm -hmm. not by any like mm -hmm. traditional dictionary it says 
a person who has been compromised or proven themselves unre unreliable, untrustworthy, mm. a liability, and generally useless. Okay, I see. Because, you know, obviously I only heard a few Porcupine Tree songs so far, but I feel that he, the main artist's um, style usually has some deeper meaning. It's not just the artistic step. It, it is interlinked somehow. I just don't know how. But, oh, this definition from Urban Dictionary. Interestingly, the definition on Urban Dictionary is actually mentioning Porcupine Tree but also mentioning that this word has been used in Walking Dead episode when Martinez refers to the governor as a dead wing. Oh, oh. So it's not, it seems like, like kind of a new word that only has been used a yeah. few times. And, but usually within this context to describe somebody almost like a black sheep in the family, there is this saying, isn't there? Somebody who failed essentially as a as a person could be yeah. who lost um who who's lost all trust yeah example another example uh gave on uh urban dictionary is mm -hmm. icarus who flew too close to the sun oh yes of course but that would be more literal he lost he literally lost his wings the... he become a dead wing kind of mm -hmm. because he was a wing that's become dead right mm -hmm. so maybe that's a good metaphor dead wing but his moral values were good. He just became too too bold, I'd say. He became too... So maybe, his pride ate him. So maybe they weren't good. And that's good. why he ended up as a dead wing. Mm. Now, I feel like it makes a bit more sense. And, you know, this darkness, that is expression of... What if it is... What if this song is about someone who actually realize they feel like they are a dead wing and it's this moment when it kind of hits them you know that's why there's this also darkness expressed in the music what would you think there are some like really metaphorical words within the song that look like are quite out of nowhere like it's really hard to kind of tackle them but then certain words are stressed it's kind of like a cancer scare in a dentist chair, you know, no one likes dentists. But also, it seems, it seems to me like it is about someone who is, uh, what's it called? Like going off the society, like mm -hmm. putting, him, putting himself back. So uh, I don't take wives and strays back home with me. So he don't take uh, things like... Uh, dogs out of the street uh, my bleeding heart does not extend to charity yes i have to say i like my privacy and did you know you're on closed circuit tv so someone who's like not really participating in in society i would say mm -hmm. or somebody who experienced something so strong that they just want to go away from society they just want to close themselves you know and something that is eating them eaten them from the inside like something that is so bad that it's crippling them now and their ability to you know go past this and then he actually says so smile at me and a dream you had of your mom and dad on a beach somewhere and the poison air with the cancer threat in a cigarette it's kind of like deadwing lullaby kind of like he's hmm he's kind of saying that everyone is this way in a, in a sense you reckon what if it's more of i think it's from the point of individual to be honest not like everybody i would rather think it's it's from the the song is from the standpoint of an individual and reflects certain individual rather than everybody in a sense you know i may be wrong though because again it's really we're just trying to kind of you know look for some meaning i guess and he says then find a place to hide so it is crippling him he just wants to hide at the end that's where i would be going probably this yeah this this bit that you've mentioned you know so smile at me and there's like mom and dad somewhere on the beach so it's like something technically really lovely and nice right so expression of some good experiences 
but then he says and the poison air with the cancer threat and so on so it's almost he's almost saying like even those who have those nice lives like they have their mom and mm-hmm. dad and they're on the beach and so on even them have this darkness crippling if you know what i mean mm-hmm. like what he feels he feels this darkness he feels this need to go away from society and maybe he's telling us that if you look closely enough anywhere you mm-hmm. will find this darkness hmm. maybe um, maybe it's just my you that's know. interesting though maybe i can't see it yet i guess but again that's my first listen and it was all kind of mixed because i had the, those mixed feelings you know because these words i think they are so metaphorical that at times it's kind of hard to tackle this one kind of line or visualize it as almost you're looking at the picture in your head, you know? That's what, what happens to me pretty often when I listen to songs. More of because he said, so smile at me. What if, you know, he's just emphasizing again this, I think we've mentioned uh, on few occasions already, on few different reactions that, you know, there are certain things in life that look, or if you're looking from a perspective of, of some outsider as a great story, right? Really happy family, beautiful and nice. And, and you know, um, almost like great photos. But in reality, there's much more going on and there's much more of this poison or poisoned air and poison in the relationship between people. So unless you are really there, unless you are in other person's head, that's the only way you can actually really know what is going on and how difficult stuff can go on, you know. But also, if you're looking for issues, you will find them. Like, pretty much, I think, if you look closely enough at mm-hmm. anything, at some point, you will start finding issues in even in the most perfect things. Like, mm-hmm. nothing, everything can be better, right? Mm-hmm. So it means that you can find some flaws in everything depends how closely you look at it yeah that's true so now and from the yellow windows of the last train aspect of max life be just a fog and a pain i look with you into the speed and black rain that's also quite metaphorical i wasn't sure why Af- afraid to touch someone afraid to ask her for her name so again i feel like it's more rather than every uh, Rather than, you know, reflection of, like, struggles that that is, uh, or the darkness that is inside of all of us, I've seen somebody, some individual, like, really, really struggling, our own demons, and, you know, something that is so crippling, something that happened almost like PTSD, you know, so traumatizing event that had such an impact on you that you just can't move forward, you know, it can even have some physiological reaction in you and it can cripple you to the point that you can't, you really want to make this connection or meet new people uh, in the train, ask some girl on the train for her name just to, to meet another person, but you can't because you're crippled. But isn't this the point of uh, describing kind of depression that even if you're still surrounded by things that are pretty much good Mm -hmm. and you have those opportunities to meet people, to ask a a girl for her name and so on, you just don't do it in among other things because you see darkness everywhere. So to me, it's kind of like this, like someone living in a world Mm -hmm. which is pretty good overall, it's getting better and better. Mm -hmm. And, but you just, cannot stop seeing sad and bl- dark things um, among you and like I think that's what he's trying to say that even though there are lights a person who is depressed just don't see them and just sees uh, bad things everywhere which makes it even more depressing actually hmm. I, I don't know it's I agree that it's very it is. Metafor- metaphorical so it's really hard to <laughs> say something for sure but funny enough it can have quite a lot of different layers as well so like you said there may be this reference to the individual experience it may be attempt to express you know some dark demons that are inside all of us or the depression and the PTSD so there can be like quite a lot um, but that's the thing. That's why I also found it. I had quite mixed feelings because 
maybe it's just because it was my first listen, it was quite hard for me to visualize someone, you know, path that I would follow through. But on the other hand, I think the musical experience was a bit better because of it. Because I like really, really focused on this musical parts. And, you know, I really, really liked the end. It's it kind of, really it's, nice. it's kind of like with depression, isn't it? Uh, sometimes you can uh, work with a person who is depressed uh, for years mm -hmm. and you don't even know they're depressed because you don't see it. It's kind of like listening to this song, but not really hearing the lyrics. Like you listen to this song, you, you think it's okay. It's quite uh, chilled. It's mm -hmm. quite melodic, nice. But when you actually start reading the lyrics or hearing the lyrics, mm -hmm. you see this darkness, you see the sadness. Yeah, yeah, that's actually, that's also a really good point. You know, that was interesting because when I first heard like the first few notes, I thought the song will be quite nice on lullaby, quite, quite chilling. But then I had something surprising, this element of surprise where it was like really kind of dark and like the tension is going up. That's how you could feel, feel. And yeah, that's, that's what would be probably somewhere here in the lyrics to, to show that, you know, all this kind of nice lullaby type of, type of experiences. It's like a facade. Yeah, but and there's it, a lot of hidden, a lot of darkness hidden behind it. Yeah, but it ends with, I throw a window open wide and step through. So again, it ends with suicide, doesn't it? Uh, I, I really don't like to think this way, you see. And what step through. what else can it mean throwing window open and yeah. stepping through it and in the morning when i find i've lost you because you know did he lost himself that he doesn't see any point anymore yeah then he just opens a window and and steps through like he's kind of given all in again wants the pain to stop you know so it can be i i would like to i think he lost any hope because mm -hmm. afraid to touch someone afraid to ask her for her name so there's no one there in his life he can't even ask uh, anyone for their name but then and in the morning when i found i've lost you so what did he lost if he hadn't have any anyone so i think he Last lost hope. hope yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh no it's actually gonna make me sad now. But but yeah, you're right, you know. It is quite a... That's why the song is, is probably... Makes you feel mixed, mixed up. Makes you feel surprised. And you feel this darkness because that's how it ends. That's... What if this song is kind of reflection of those mixed feelings and this internal fight that you have before committing this last act, before you losing the last pieces of hope? Or it actually makes us uh, realize that a depressed person can look like everyone else. Like yeah. the pre depressing song can look like any other song, mm -hmm. like a people. So it makes us more aware about depressed peoples among us and that yeah. we need to help them. Maybe something like that. Wow. Yeah, that's so good. And that's so smart when I think of it. In terms of the creation of the song, obviously, I don't want to, you know... I don't want to kind of look bad by saying it this way, you know. But, but yeah, that and that is the truth, unfortunately. We hear about so many situations around us, uh, about, you know, suicide is a serious, um, serious problem in today's society. And more often than not, when you see the articles um, or, or some interviews with the family members of such person that unfortunately committed suicide, that is pretty common theme that no one would expect at this, that they didn't see it because all they could see was this facade that everything is okay, which is really, really scary in a sense. But then this song was kind of like this as well. It had this facade that it is really nice listen, you know, but when you kind of try to deep into it a bit more and more, the more darkness, the more darkness reveals itself, I feel. Yeah, I mean, every single song of Porcupine Tree, I feel, touches upon more and more kind of difficult type of psychological issues. That's, that's what I feel at the moment, you know. I can, <clears throat> I just had a thought that, which is quite uh, bad as well, or quite mm. sad, that... Uh, about what are the dangers of not 
of thinking that uh, looking at appearances so let's say thinking uh, that someone who let's say you see someone who is depressed but you don't know they are depressed mm -hmm. they look quite cheerful they look quite all right normally for you and like the appearances are very misguiding and i'm thinking about like uh could it be contagious in any way what do you mean by contagious do you mean that it can like this like it becomes a trend to be sad kind of like celebrating sadness mm. So do, do you remember those people mm -hmm. who are cutting mm -hmm. yeah. themselves? And you can think about bulimia as well, like this. You reckon? Yeah. I guess like the whole spectrum of different different type of um, health issues, you know, or psychological um, issues or, or, or health conditions, you know, it can actually be much wider and doesn't refer just to the suicide um yeah that's contagiousness i mean i don't really want to go this way uh, or i don't want to see the song through this prism or think about this in this way because i find it quite um scary topic in a sense yeah you know and i i really don't want to think that that's no that it's... celebrates this sadness in any way no, it just I, I was thinking that it might be a danger of not recognizing that appearances aren't all that you can yeah. misjudge some someone by their appearance. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I think you touched upon something slightly different that it can actually yeah. be spread into others this whatever it is, whatever is going through you, it can be actually kind of passed on to someone else if you start and being with this person maybe. I mean, you know, I don't really want to I don't want my words to be taken the wrong way either. It is um, quite a difficult topic, but you know what? As we are on this note, if you feel, you know, kind of overwhelmed with life, if you feel this way, seek help. There's a lot of, you may not realize it and you may feel you are alone, but you are not. There's a lot of people, a lot of organizations, a lot of telephone lines that can help you. So I think that's what I would like to you know, stress, if that's what, what you're going through, obviously, you know, oh, sorry, it's just a bit difficult to, to talk about this, I feel like we went into, like, a really dark mood now, <laughs> yeah, definitely, but, but, yeah, um, I don't know even if I would like to hear this song again now, after you said <laughs> this, only because I feel like I took it slightly inappropriately, you know, because I felt at, at times that was like mm, something to even, you know, kind of then something to dance to because it, it had this musical theme throughout. So so I just feel a bit iffy. I don't know. You know. But yeah, it was a it was a good song. And I think like the artistic side is actually brilliant. The more we talk about this and if the song should reflect this kind of facade and this great struggle that a lot of people with, with certain problems are going through, especially in today's society, you know, we are surrounded by technology, surrounded by internet, social media, yet so many people feels like truly, truly alone, having no one to talk to. And there's so many of us feeling this way. So, so I think it kind of highlights a lot of today's society's problems. That's it really for me. Um, yeah, to finish it on, on a bit more cheerful cheerful note, um, I'm I'm just hoping you won't mind this level years. I have no idea how the sound is gonna sound. Hopefully it's not gonna be too bad. I am a bit worried that you know you can hear every little kind of noise in the noise room noise in the background. Apologies if that's the case. We did all we could and I mean I, I think it was a bit of a headache for you, but nothing we can do right now hopefully it will be fixed on our next video and as always thank you so much for being with us for watching if if you are having any any kind of thoughts and interpretations that you would like to share i i love to read all your interpretations and i would love to hear what what how the song makes you feel you know um and yeah 
Thank you so much for being with us and thank you for watching. See you next week.